Hi, my name is John Salentine with Hammerhead Industries. I'm here to give you an overview of the GearKeeper tool lanyard products. Uh, there's various products we do depending on the weight of tools. Uh, there is uh, what we call personal tool lanyards, which really are for things less than seven kilograms. Uh, there's anchor tethers when you're going into that seven kilogram or, or more class where you want to attach a tool to uh, a structure instead of yourself. There is retractables when we talk about small tools in the four point or point four five kilogram, point nine kilogram, one point five eight kilogram range. And then there's uh, wrist lanyards. So the personal tool lanyards or coil type lanyards are the most common in the marketplace. They're the most cost effective. They handle the most weight loads. And the thing to remember is right now there's not specific standards that tell us as a manufacturer how we test these or what you need to do. So it's important for you to evaluate a product uh, depending on your application to make sure it's the right product for you. We make a fairly high level product line. It's not the cheapest on the market, but our tool lanyards have uh, about 60% stretch and it's a very low tension stretch. So what that means is that when you're working close to yourself with a tool, you don't have a big coil hanging out, yet you get a very long range without a lot of tension. And we do that by integrating the elastic into the webbing instead of having a, a bungee cord going through the center of it. The other thing to look at is the quality of the carabiners. Are they load rated? Uh, when you operate them, do they hang up? or do they easily close and stay closed? Um, you'll see on a lot of products where the carabiners don't work well or they seem uh, lightweight. Um, it's a good question to ask of the manufacturer. Have these been load tested and what has the product been tested to? Um, you can look at differences in how a lanyard is attached. I mean, for example, we sew the lengthwise of the lanyard to catch as much of the material as possible instead of just doing a cross stitch. Uh, we do things like serialization so that when you put them into your inventory, you can track when you got them. We know when we built these, what components we used, if there's ever a problem, we can track it back to that. All those things come into play when you look at the cost of a product. Now, if you're looking at a disposable product and something that you don't want around for a long time or you don't really care about, then you don't have to answer those questions. But if you're taking your safety program seriously, those are the things you want to know. Now, there is no standard that tells people how much weight can I attach to a person. These are made for up to 6.8 kilograms. And that was based on a US standard of certain customers asking for that weight rating, probably because no one was telling us how to test it. Really, up in the four to five kilogram range, you want to really consider whether you're attaching that tool to yourself because of the shock load when you do drop a tool. That's why we build things like this, which we call anchor tethers. It's a fairly big tether. It goes up to 11.3 kilogram tool rating, and it has a very long stretch. We have about 300% stretch on this. So what that means is when you're working close, it's a tight lanyard, but you can stretch to almost 2.7 meters. So you're anchored to a structure instead of yourself. So you're not endangering the worker with a heavy tool. Um, when you have one or two tools on yourself, using a coil lanyard like this isn't a problem. But as you start getting more and more tools attached to you, uh, it becomes an entanglement hazard. <clears throat> That's when we go to the retractables. Now, the retractables can only go up at this point um, up to 1.58 kilograms. So we're talking small tools. Um, but what that allows you to do is have a bunch of tethers to your tool belt and to yourself without having big coils you get caught up in. Now, when you think about retractables, we think about a keychain holder where someone pulls it out, lets it go, and it snaps back. These are not designed to work that way. They're very low tension, so you don't feel the weight of the tool, you don't feel the tension on it, and it will not retract the tool. It's simply retracting the tether. So when you put the tool away, you don't have a coil. If you have tension on that when you're holding your tool up at heights, you're fighting that tension. Um, so therefore, that's the way we do these things. Uh, we do have manual locks, but we're not big onto the ratcheting locks because we don't want to change how a, how a worker does his job. 
If you have a ratcheting system, they're typically not very reliable in the industrial environment. And then it causes the worker to pull something out, try to get it to hit the lock, try to unlock it. What we want to do is try to minimize the impact on the worker. Grab your tool, pull it out, use it, put it away. It, it keeps things very fast. Wrist lanyards are kind of specific in how you would use them. Typically, our customers use them when their drop distances are short. If they're working on a piece of equipment that they're trying to protect the tool from hitting the equipment versus dropping way down below. Um, very specific in the weight ranges on them. I mean, we build these for, um, that they'll handle a lot of load, but you don't want to put a lot of weight on your wrist and worry about that impacting a worker to have an injury. When we talk about tool lanyards, that's, that's what we're trying to do, is attach a tool to a person. There's a second portion to that, and that is how do you actually attach to the tool? Now, there's manufacturers that are starting to make tools with attachment points. Companies like Snap-on make a whole line of uh, tools for heights that have very smart attachment points. But a lot of times, it's not practical to go in and change all your tools. So we get into uh, attachments for putting on the tools. And there's a lot of different ways uh, of doing this. If you want to come over here, I can show you some examples of things. There's, you know, you'll hear the terms shrink wrap and cold wrap and uh, self-fusing tape. Every manufacturer has a different theory in doing it. Um, what we do is we use a self-fusing tape. And the importance of what we do different from uh, some other companies is that you will see some things where people take a load ring lanyard and they'll tape it onto the tool. When you do that, the uh, structural part is the tape holding the lanyard or the load ring to the tool. Um, in a lot of cases, that's, plenty, that's perfectly fine. Um, we don't always feel comfortable with that. So our theory of doing things uh, is very simple and very effective. And what we do is a loop and cinch type method. That is the attachment point. Uh, that cinch will hold the tool, will not slide typically. We simply use the tape around here um, to do something like this. So it holds the cinch tight and it prevents it from sliding. So in a company, the biggest challenge is trying to figure out how I'm going to do all that. Well, with these products right here, there's uh, six products and a roll of tape. You can typically attach to any tool you have. A uh, couple other things on that is when you're using things like screwdrivers or pliers uh, that need to twist, uh, you want to do a swivel type attachment. So I can use this, this screwdriver how it's intended to be used. If you would put simply a D-ring on there like that, it doesn't give you the chance of using this without twisting your lanyard. There's one other thing that some companies will tell you, well, it's not good to use barrel lock lanyards, and it's true in a lot of cases, because you have to worry about the barrel lock here holding your cinch tight and, and coming off. But there are certain applications where this makes sense. On a box end wrench like this, sometimes it's required to move the lanyard from one end of the tool to the other depending on the work involved. A lanyard like this will allow you to do that because it will slide and it's not cinched and taped like this. It becomes the priority of the worker then to make sure that this always stays tight like that. So there's a lot of ways of doing things and the way you do them will depend on uh, your application, uh, your tools you're using, and your work environment.